You ever get that like grimy or slimy feeling after you read a news story or an article about somebody who's just kind of grimy and slimy? Well, that's kind of how I'm going to feel, I think, after I read this stuff when it comes to Bobby Kotick. Not hating on Activision when it comes down to it, but this dude, Bobby Kotick, he cannot be trusted whatsoever when it comes down to it. But we are going to get into some things that he had to say about the next gen Switch, some misconceptions, and some misinformation that is going around in terms of what he had to say about the power of the system because a lot of you guys tagged me on this a lot of you guys linked me to articles and wanted me to talk about it so here we are at this point but before we get into that guys what's good everyone oj here welcome back to the video my voice is still jacked up but i'm doing my best so please hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell to get my videos first and of course check out our live streams 7 p.m eastern time pretty much daily right here on the channel now let's go ahead and get right back into this because we're going to talk about the article that went up where most of you guys tagged me on with the next gen nintendo switch and the original article before it was deleted and then rewritten from nintendo everything was activision boss says next nintendo console is close to ps4 slash xbox one in terms of power and actually some other people still have that up it's not deleted everywhere but nintendo everything did delete the original twitter post and article that stated the title just like that so let's debunk a little bit of that so right now what's going on we have the ftc meetings the court case with activism blizzard xbox trying to get them ftc here in america is trying to block it so you're getting all sorts of juicy bits and all sorts of dirty laundry just being aired out for everyone to see and you also have a host of people fudging the truth manipulating things and doing things that big business will do guys so be very critical and scrutinize every single thing that comes out of these meetings and comes out of these different court cases because yes while they're under oath to tell the truth that doesn't mean they're not going to twist things one way or another without completely admitting that oh it's false there's going to be some degree but probably a lot of manipulation going on to get what they want which in this case is a 70 billion dollar acquisition for microsoft to get activision blizzard and sony saying we don't want that because we want to be the number one people to have exclusive call of duty skins and other stuff we don't want that to go to our competitor because so many people buy call of duty so there is a lot of i would say manipulation and stuff going on here overall but let's get to what it pertains to nintendo here because there was a quote saying that he said given and i'm paraphrasing here given it's around and he's talking about the next gen switch around the same power of the ps4 and xbox one we think that we can get something done when he was questioned if the next one will have call of duty or is going to get it however he was further questioned on that because the way that it sounded it sounded like maybe he knew but he didn't know people just took that one statement and ran with it but if you dig a little bit deeper shout out to my man direct feed games and i also saw this myself he didn't really say that he knew the specs or if it's around ps4 xbox one or anything like that he actually stated this now here's the question even without microsoft buying activision it's likely that activision would make cod available on future nintendo hardware and here's what he had to say i think it's possible we consider the specs so he says we'd consider the specs and he's talking about the next switch because we already know the specs of the current switch now the next question they repeat it again because that was obviously a pretty small or vague answer and the answer is this from kotick like i said once we have the detailed specifications we missed out on this past generation on switch i would like to think we'd be able to do that but we'd have to wait for specs we don't have any present plans to do so so they don't have any present plans to do so when it comes to this next switch coming up they don't have any specifications or at least he doesn't know what the specifications are and simply he's saying hey we don't have any plans but once we know then we can and then he also stated given it's around maybe ps4 xbox one i mean i'm pretty sure we could do something and he also talked about how there was some other things how he stated that he should have put out stuff on the switch that he made a bad judgment call when he felt that nintendo was trying to do too much and he said that it's probably going to be the second biggest video game system of all time so understandably he was like hey you know what? we kind of missed the boat on that one but 
I will repeat, Bobby Kotek is a slimy dude and a liar. I mean, I'm not sure what he's saying here is true or not in terms of, oh, we were upset that we missed the Switch and all that. I don't really think he cares. And honestly, here's the reason why I don't really think he cares. The Switch has been out for how many years now when it comes down to 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. It's been out for so many years. And in that time frame, you absolutely saw the trajectory of the switch going up 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 and up you absolutely have the money from what you were making with warzone and everything to put together a team to make call of duty on switch they did it with lower spec systems before in the past they put call of duty on the ds at one point they put call of duty on the wii even next to the ps3 and the xbox 360 they put call of duty on the wii u they put call of duty on lower spec machines or compared to the higher spec machines out there the fact that he's saying oh well we missed our boat you know oh we missed our chance and we just didn't do it and man if i could have i mean i would go back and do it dude you had literally more than half a decade there's been multiple other publishers that didn't support the switch at launch in the first number of years that ended up getting their big games on the nintendo switch games like mortal kombat for example and other big titles other big impossible ports have came out we've seen doom eternal regular doom so we've seen big shooters come out on the system so i think that's where this kind of like line and manipulation goes him saying oh man we would have or the next one oh we sure will if we know like dude you had plenty of time you didn't want to do it you didn't want to do it and you weren't going to do it they're trying to poke some holes in his statements here but once again you can't trust anything bobby kotek has to say but let me get to the actual crux of this and what people are saying and i'm sorry i was a bit long-winded there but i had to get that out of the way but let's get to what's going on here with this like the xbox one ps4 if the switch 2 is in that power range that would be like a steam deck type of situation that's what people are thinking i think that it goes beyond that though when it comes down to it one he doesn't know the specs so we can't just sit there and say that yeah that's what it is because we can't trust bobby kotick on that and he doesn't know obviously he said that he doesn't know but um when it comes down to it i do think that the newer technology is going to be something that's different right if they take advantage of dlss if there's other things that they do to kind of punch above its weight saying ps4 xbox one or whatever the case is isn't going to be a one-to-one -one type of translation just because those are such older technology compared to what nintendo could do with this next switch so we definitely have to wait and see but i would say this ps4 and xbox one like a portable one in your hand let's just say hypothetically that was it that's still pretty good i think that the nintendo switch itself it's got some miraculous ports on it and if you bump the power up to where it could handle that type so if it's like a steam deck or something around the range of that or a little bit better with some other stuff to help it when it comes to like memory bandwidth or when it comes to other things i think that you can get a lot of great games and it'll be much better especially for nintendo's first party because i think that nintendo's first party they're not going to try to go for super high 4k fidelity at 120 frames or anything crazy like that so i think that nintendo's definitely going to go for a fidelity type of route they're not going to go for all out let's make this the greatest most powerful system of all time because then it's going to have two seconds of battery life like the rog ally or steam deck is not very good either when it comes to battery life with big games so nintendo's going to balance all of that out overall but at the end of the day, man, like it's one of those things to where it's coming. Obviously, we're hearing a lot of next gen talk. There's been a lot of stuff that's happening. Nintendo's investor meeting. I talked about it as well. What's going on there? Nintendo talked about how they're going to combat scalpers with the next gen switch, how they're going to have Nintendo accounts on the next gen switch, which they've been saying for multiple years now. And we have this whole FTC thing that's going on as well. We had Ubisoft come out and say, hey, we're going to update Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope on the next gen Nintendo switch. So obviously it's somewhat close otherwise nintendo wouldn't have told him to wait on that one so things are happening things are happening on that front but speaking of something else that's happening on a front let's talk about final fantasy 16 shipments and digital sales this has caused a little bit of a firestorm online not really a controversy but man you better mention the install base if you talk about final fantasy 16 sales if you don't mention the install base and break down where every system was compared to final fantasy 7 remake and final fantasy 15 you will 
OB went after online. So I want to make sure that I do this right, but I talk about it in a way that's um, also fair as well. But let's just first get into the sales. I think that 3 million, which is what was announced, is really good. But I want to get into the official announcement here. So total shipments and digital sales for Final Fantasy 16 have surpassed 3 million units worldwide, according to Square Enix. Now the game is out. You can pick it up, go get it. There's a demo, transfers over. It's really good. Now the 3 million units compared to everything else, if you want to know, like just like for comparison's sake. So the PlayStation 5 is about 38 to 40 million right now. And it sold 3 million units in the first six days, according to Square Enix. That's the sales tracking six days. And you have digital plus physical 3 million units. Now, if you compare that to FF7 Remake, in the first three days, it sold 3.5 million units. And that was on an install base of 100 million plus with the PlayStation 4 back in 2020. And if you go back to 2016 with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and Final Fantasy 15, that sold 5 million on the first day. 5 million on the first day. And there's some numbers floating around about PS4 and Xbox One split but I couldn't really find anything, but I'm pretty sure the large majority of that was on the PlayStation 4. So all of that considered, we have the install bases there, guys. I'm surprised install base wasn't trending on Twitter uh, when it comes to people just, ooh, man, I mentioned sales and I talked about install bases, but it wasn't enough for some people. But yeah, I think that Final Fantasy 16 selling 3 million is a solid and good start. It's a solid and good start obviously given the install base and everything it's a good start it didn't beat out final fantasy 15 but once again, final fantasy 15 did have a bit of a larger install base overall to go off of now the install base when it comes to the playstation 4 versus the playstation 5 with final fantasy 15 versus final fantasy 16 yes final fantasy 15 had a larger playstation 4 install base to work with final fantasy 16 had the focus solely as being an exclusive and multiple presentations and hype built up just for that now final fantasy 15 had a decade long of hype so obviously the hype for that game was so sky high and it also had way more japanese interest compared to final fantasy 16 because of the style of game that it is so there's some different things here and there but overall i think the thing to take away is that three million units all things considered is not bad it's a good first start and it can get better as time goes on with price drops and maybe they do some dlc way down the line and they do some performance fixes as well i think that this game can continue to sell as more and more people give it a shot maybe finish up some other games that they're playing i mean there is a lot when it comes down to third party on the playstation 5 so i think some people are definitely going to pick it up later down the line maybe pick it up with spider-man once there's some discounts black friday deals stuff like that so it's definitely not over and it absolutely did not flop or had a flopping week people tried to sit there and say that no it did it it did good it did good didn't do better than final fantasy 15 and that's probably the reason why square enix was panicking just a little bit they saw all of those final fantasy 15 pre-orders they probably saw that final fantasy 7 remake pre-orders were a little bit better as well compared to final fantasy 16 and they're like uh oh what's going on here you know we have all this hype we have all this anticipation yeah the install base isn't as high but we felt that given the lack of exclusive titles for the PlayStation 5 and this game completely targeting it, we can really galvanize the base to even go above what we thought. So I think that's the reason why they were a little bit worried because it was tracking below both the previous major Final Fantasy games and it did end up selling less than that in more amounts of time. So Final Fantasy 15 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake both were tracked for less amount for the debut sales and sold more remember this was six days for final fantasy 16 for 3 million copies whereas ff7 remake was three days for 3.5 million copies and final fantasy 16 was one day for 5 million so that's where a little bit of the panic was coming from because the pre-orders were a lot lower and yes it ended up selling lower but i would say comparative to final fantasy 7 remake i think ff16 did incredibly well because you have 3.5 million in the first three days compared to 3 million in the first six days 
and the PS4 had a massive lead over the PS5 at the same time that these two games were being released. So I definitely think that's a really good comparison with those two. But I also think FF7 Remake underperformed a little bit, probably from what I thought at least, maybe not from what Square Enix thought, but I thought it was gonna do way better than what it actually did because everyone had been asking for a Final Fantasy VII Remake for like ever at this point since, you know, the PS3 era. So I do feel that this game, Final Fantasy 16, did well in comparison to FF7 Remake. Um, obviously, FF15, that's a little bit of a different beast. It's going to be tough to be able to hit 5 million in one day for Final Fantasy and 10 million plus overall. That's going to be difficult because obviously the PC, when it comes to FF15, the Royal Edition and all of that. But I think eventually FF16 is going to pick up more steam. It's going to keep going. So it's not a bad launch week at all, in my opinion, at least. In my opinion, it's not a bad launch week. And we'll see how it goes and see where the legs are from here on out. I do think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to be interesting because if that game is so much better than Final Fantasy XVI or if that game has a life of its own and really people are loving the fact that it's open-ended now and they have all this stuff and you have Cloud and everybody that you can see there in Red 13 and the game plan and it becomes its own beast, it might be taking sales away or it might kind of have people forget about FF16 because you have this incredibly high quality Final Fantasy game as well. So we'll see how it affects it. They both could sell in tandem. I mean, we just don't know at this point. But I do think that FF16 did solid. It was a good first week, good sales, and not bad at all. Not bad at all. So what are your thoughts on all of this when it comes to Activision, Blizzard, next-gen Nintendo Switch, Final Fantasy 16 sales? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell, and check out our videos right here on screen. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you for the next one. Peace out.